So good afternoon students. Let's uh, proceed with uh, the attenuation part which we were doing yesterday. So just a quick recap of uh, what we did yesterday. Uh, I discussed that uh, fiber is a nonlinear channel because of which uh, the input power from the source once it reaches the destination undergoes an exponential decay right? or there is an exponential decrease in the power. So this is the equation that uh, represents an exponential decay. So P naught is the output power. P in is the input power at the source and you have an exponent which is uh, having a power of negative alpha L where L is the distance of the fiber and uh, alpha is known as the attenuation constant which is have which has the units of uh, dB per kilometer. So we'll discuss that. Uh, then we discussed what attenuation actually does uh, in terms of uh, power. It limits the optical power. Also we discussed the other uh, part which we are going to have in uh, module 2 which is uh, dispersion. Uh, dispersion basically affects the uh, bandwidth of the signal uh, because the property of the bit is that once it uh, uh, reaches certain distance, it starts to elongate or it starts to spread, which is known as the intersymbol interference. It leads to crosstalk with the other bits and therefore there is going to be data loss. Right? And then I introduced uh, a new uh, unit to you called uh, DBM. It is pronounced as uh, DBM written as uh, decibel M and this power basically is uh, in relation to or relative to one milliwatt. Right? So now let's uh, today look at uh, a little more detail of this uh, DBM and what exactly this DBM looks like. Right? So the reason why we are doing this DBM is because uh, the powers. The powers in OSC system are usually in milliwatts in milliwatts. Right? So we are usually dealing with milliwatt of power when it comes to source and uh, detectors, right? So if you have to write the power in DBM, right? So I'll give it a subscript DBM, then it is nothing but 10 log of the power in watts divided by relation to 1 milliwatt, right? So more specifically, uh, let me write this as uh, the output power. Let me call this as, uh, uh, let's say, P out power. So I'll just call it P out on, uh, on the superscript. And let me call this as the input power, P in, right? So let us take the example let P in be 200 microwatt. Let P in be 200 microwatt, right? So what will happen? The P out in DBM will become 10 log, right? Now, if you look at this P in watt, okay, let me put an arrow here. If you concentrate on this, if you concentrate on this here, this is P in in watt and if you concentrate on the denominator part, it is milliwatt, right? So what I'll do is this 200 microwatt, I'll write it as 200 into 10 raised to negative 3 microwatt, right? Because it is 10 raised to 6, micro is 10 raised to 6. So I'm just splitting it as uh, two parts, 200 into 10 raised to minus 3 and another 10 raised to minus 3 is left, so I'm writing that as milliwatt, right? So I'll insert that in the numerator here. So I'll have 200 into 10 raised to negative 3, right? And I'm left with milliwatt divided by divided by 1 milliwatt, right? So what will happen here in this ratio? Now you'll have the milliwatt and the milliwatt on the denominator and, and the numerator will cancel each other. So you just are left with 200 into 10 raised to negative 3 divided by 1, right? Now, please use a calculator and let me know what answer you get here. Use a calculator and let me know what answer you get here.
minus six point nine eight sir. Yeah, so uh, uh, approximately negative seven. So your answer here is negative seven dBm. That means this answer of two hundred micro watt has been converted into a negative seven dBm. Why am I calling it dBm? It is decibel. Why is it decibel? Because of this log. But it is dBm. This m is because I have done this in relation to one milliwatt. Right? That is the concept here. Okay. Now let's try to understand a little better. Let's have p in as fifty microwatt uh, or fifty milliwatt. Uh, let's cancel micro and let's have fifty milliwatt. Okay. Follow the same process and let me know what answer you get. I'll also solve with you. I'll give you a minute to solve this. So p in is fifty milliwatt. Minus thirteen point zero one. Minus thirteen point zero one. Okay, so for fifty milliwatt, you get negative thirteen point zero one dB. Now P in, let's keep it one milliwatt. Let me know what answer you get. What answer do you get for one milliwatt? Hmm. Very simple. You don't need a calculator also. Zero, sir. Yeah, you'll have ten log of one milliwatt divided by one milliwatt, which will be log of one. Log one is zero, so you'll get the answer as zero dBm. So you can see some kind of a trend, but let me not uh, do that. Let us do this. Sir, so fifty milli. Ha, ah, fifty milli one. I I I want you to understand where you have made a mistake. Yes, yeah, so it's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's hold on. Sixteen point nine. Ah, you'll get a positive value. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Check again for fifty milli watt. I think uh, you uh, are getting 17th. this answer. Yes, positive. you are getting this answer of negative thirteen point zero one for fifty micro watt. Yes, yeah, sir. Hmm. It is fifty milli watt. So let me know what answer you get. Sixteen point nine eight, sir. Okay. So let me write here. When P in is fifty milli watt, your answer is sixteen point nine eight dBm. When P in is fifty micro watt, your answer is negative thirteen point zero one dBm. Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now one last value. Let's do for P in equal to ten milli watt. Please let me know what answer you get. Ten, sir. Hmm. You get what? Ten dBm. Right. Okay. So now with these answers, let's make one small table. Okay. Now, when and uh, let this uh, will not give any units to the power. When the power is uh, one milliwatt, what is the dBm value that you got? Zero dBm, right? Now, when the power is in microwatt, for example, fifty microwatt, the dBm value that we got is negative thirteen point zero one dBm. When it is 200 microwatt, the power that we got is negative seven. But when the power is when the power is 10 milliwatt, the answer that we get is 10 dBm. When the power is 50 milliwatt, the answer is 17 dBm. Right? So you can see what trend we are getting with respect to dBm and the power. So what trend are we getting? The trend is 
that if you have the power, if you have the power in microwatt, or if you have the power below one milliwatt, right? Let me draw one line here, dotted line, so you can see much clearly. If the power is below one milliwatt, you get negative dBMs. But when the power is more than one milliwatt, you start getting positive dBMs. Right? Are you able to see that? Yes, so sir. For one milliwatt of power, we get zero dBm. For any power which is less than one milliwatt, you get negative dBm. And for any power which is greater than uh, one milliwatt, you start getting positive dBm. So this is a trend which will help us in understanding our answers. Okay, because the power that will be given in the numericals to calculate the attenuation will be in some microwatt or milliwatt. We will first have to convert them into dBm to find, uh, you know, whatever we have to find, like attenuation constant or so on. Right. So this is a very very important concept here. Okay. So you can uh, do this dBm uh, for various other values as well. Right. So just a quick recap: what this dBm does is it calculates the output power for us given an input power p in in relation to 1 milliwatt right so everything happens relative to 1 milliwatt so the question is uh, not what we do why we do this so we are taking this 1 milliwatt because the power levels in ofc systems for the source and the detectors are very low we cannot give 10 or 20 watts to uh, you know, watt of power to a laser or a photodiode, you know, it will not sustain that kind of power, right? So the power which has, which is usually given to the lasers, LEDs, spin diodes is in uh, the units of milliwatts. That's why we are doing everything in relation to one milliwatt. Okay, so that is the concept here. Okay, so with that, now let's look at the attenuation, right? What we had described. So attenuation basically is uh, going to uh, affect the optical power, right? And uh, let's see how what will be the mathematical equation for this uh, attenuation. Okay. So let us assume. So let me write this point wise. So let us assume uh, an optical fiber. So I'll write OSC, an optical fiber cable uh, through which through which light propagates through which light propagates along the length uh, L. Okay. Uh, in the book, they take this as uh, Z. I'm just taking it uh, length because uh, you know L is for length. Okay. You can also use Z. So if you see some Z in some formula, don't be confused. It is nothing but length. Okay. Now, if P of zero, if P of zero is power launched, if this is the power launched into the fiber, into the fiber at L equal to zero, means this is the starting point, right? Uh, of course, please understand this P naught is optical power, okay? That means this is light. So I've just written it more. Uh, uh, clearly it is optical power right not electrical power so this is the power the light power which is launched into the fiber at the starting and let and let some power be available and let some power be available at So let me write this as let the power available at distance L at distance L uh, P P of L. So diagrammatically whatever we have written looks like this. So you have an optical fiber. I'm only drawing the core part. So you have an optical fiber. 
this has a length l we are inserting an input power this is the input side and from here we are inserting a power p0 so this is the starting point 0 and that is the end point which is l so i am uh, inserting optical power p0 into the fiber and at the output the power that we receive is denoted as p of l because l is the distance there right so in this case what has been observed is that the power at the output that is p of l is related to the power at the input at the input p of 0 as an exponent of negative alpha l right where alpha is attenuation constant of the fiber and it is a function of wavelength that means the wavelength of operation of an OFC system is going to affect what is going to be the attenuation of that fiber right so just to let you know if you operate at 1550 nanometer which is the current systems operating at this wavelength the attenuation factor of the fibers the silica fibers is around between 0.2 to 0.25 db per kilometer so you can see that at this wavelength the attenuation is very very low around 0 0.2 or 0.21 or 0.22 db per uh, kilometer this should actually be kilometer db per kilometer right so very important to note that this alpha is a function of wavelength. So if you operate at some other wavelength, it is quite possible that you may not get this alpha. You may get a higher alpha. So with higher attenuation, there are issues. OK, so now let's see how we can uh, rewrite this particular equation. OK, so let me call this equation as uh, equation one. This is the starting equation. Now we want to rewrite that equation one in terms of alpha. Right, so what we are going to do is we are going to cross multiply. So you have P of L divided by P of 0 will be E raised to minus alpha L. That implies minus alpha L will be natural log P of L divided by P of 0. Right now. In the next step, I'm going to get rid of the negative side on the LHS. So therefore, I'm going to have just alpha L natural log. And when I take this negative sign here into the uh, bracket, uh, it's just going to be a flip of the ratio. So when the negative sign goes inside uh, P of L divided by P naught, there's going to be a flip. So you're going to have P of zero divided by P of L. Right, that's basic uh, logarithm there, which implies that I can find alpha as 1 by L natural log P of 0 divided by P of L. This is an important equation. Let us call this equation 2. Let us call that equation 2. Right. So here P of 0 is the input power, P of L is the output power and L is the length of the fiber. Okay. So I hope that was clear. Now let us write it in a, the units that generally the attenuation is written in. Okay. So we want to write this attenuation in dB per kilometer. Okay. So this alpha here is the attenuation constant. Right. So I want to write this in dB per kilometer. So the alpha in dB per kilometer can be written as now 1 by L will become 10 by L because I want to change that natural log into the log base 10, right? So that conversion is 10 log to the base 10 P of 0 divided by P of L.
now if i want to write this uh, in the terms of the power right so uh, let me call this equation uh, equation 3 so you can use this equation if you want to find alpha in db per kilometer right so you'll have 10 by l log to the base 10 p not by pl p not by pl okay now if i want to write this in terms of power right so what should we do this is what we need to do so first i'll multiply that alpha i'll multiply that alpha so i'll multiply that alpha with the l and 10 so i'll have alpha l divided by 10 equal to log to the base 10 p of 0 divided by p of l next step will be if i want to remove the logarithm you'll have p of 0 divided by p of l equal to 10 raised to alpha l by 10 which implies if i want to write this in the form of uh, if i want to write this in the form of uh, p of l then it will be p of l equal to 10 raised to minus alpha l by 10 into p of c let us call this equation 4 so you can see here what is happening right so p of l will be 10 raised to minus alpha l by 10 into p not if i want to write this in, in the linear form then p of l will be nothing but if i want to remove the exponential part then it will just be p not plus minus alpha l. right of course all this will be in decibels so this is equation 5 in decibels okay so there are different forms of the same equation for attenuation and powers which can be used uh, which one to use will depend on uh, the kind of uh, the kind of uh, numerical which is given to us so looking at the numerical what needs to be find, uh, found and what values are given we will have to use uh, the appropriate equation okay so i cannot say that uh, this particular equation is the one that we will be using a lot or that uh, equation will be using a lot it's uh, it will completely depend on the numerical uh, that uh, that is given to us okay so uh, i should also highlight here just for completeness that the way in which we write the power in dvm so if you have the power in dbm then this can be written as 10 log to the base 10 power divided by 1 milliwatt right where 1 milliwatt is the reference power so uh, let us look at uh, one numerical uh, which will give us a clear idea of how we can uh, solve this uh, attenuation problem okay the uh, from an exam point of view there is uh, guaranteed one problem based on attenuation uh, the other question which they ask is what is attenuation and how uh, ask you to derive the uh, relation for this attenuation okay so let us look at one numerical it will give us more clarity of uh, how we can use these equations okay so the question is consider a 30 km long optical fiber cable that has an attenuation that has an attenuation of 0.8 db per kilometer at 13 10 nanometer 
question is find the output power and they call it uh, p out so find the output power p out if 200 microwatt of optical power is launched into the fiber. The other thing which they are saying is express the power in milliwatt. So they want the final answer in terms of uh, milliwatt that uh, in those units. Okay. So very first thing we should do is we should first note what are the values which are given to us and what is it that uh, we are expected to find, right? So what we are given is a 30 kilometer long optical fiber cable. So by our derivation, we had kept L as the distance of the fiber or length of the fiber, and that is 30 kilometers. It has an attenuation. So the attenuation value is given to us alpha, which is 0.8 dB per kilometer. We are also given the operating wavelength. So we'll call it as lambda, which is 13, 10 nanometer. We are given that uh, we need to find the output power. So we need to find P out or as per our definition P of L that is after the length, uh, you know, the signal or the light goes through L kilometers of the fiber. So we need to find that given that the input power given that if 200 microwatt of power is launched into the fiber, that means the input power. So I'll call this as P of zero as per our definition is 200 micro watt right so this is what we have to do okay now the equation which we can use this first equation we know that p of l is p naught e raised to minus alpha l right so this is one equation that we could use right i should write p of zero this is one equation we could use we are given p uh, we have, we need to find p pl p of l right we are given p naught which is 200 microwatt uh, e raised to minus alpha is given to us and l is given to us however this will become a little complicated because we need to find the exponent right rather we can use a simpler we can use a simpler uh, you know equation to find uh, the the p of l right so let us see what kind of equation we can use to find p of l okay so first up let us convert this 200 microwatt into dbm so the p of 0 can be converted into a dbm value as 10 log to the base 10 P, P naught, the value is given as 200 microwatt in relation to 1 milliwatt, right? Because I'm finding this P naught in terms of dBm, right? So I can rewrite this bracket as 10 log to the base 10, 200 into 10 raised to minus 3 milliwatt divided by 1 milliwatt. therefore the p naught or p of uh, 0 in dbm is 10 log to the base 10 200 into 10 raised to minus 3 divided by 1 because the milliwatt in the numerator and denominator is going to cancel each other and this answer is negative 7 this answer is negative 7 now from the attenuation equation, I know that I can write alpha dB, right? Let me scroll up to the equation for alpha dB. So I know that I can use this equation here, right? And you can see that this alpha is in dB and I have calculated the power in dBm, 
right so i'm going to use that equation equation number 3 so alpha db is 1 by l into or 10 by l log to the base 10 of p of 0 divided by p of l, which implies or let me write this here which implies i can write p of l as p of 0 divided by 10 raised to 10 raised to alpha l by 10 right so i am using this equation here let me show you that equation so i am using this equation here equation number 4 which relates p not with uh, p0 with ps right that is what i am doing here so p of l will be p not divided by 10 raised to alpha l by 10 now we can substitute the values so p of 0 is given to us which is 200 into 10 raised to minus 6 this is only in microwatt and you have 10 raised to alpha is 0.8 db per kilometer so you have 0.8 the distance which is given to us is of the fiber is 30 so that divided by 10 that divided by 10 so can anyone tell me uh, what answer do you get here Seven point nine six into ten to the minus five. Ah, so let me write what she's saying. Seven point nine six into ten raised to minus seven. Minus seven, no? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'll write this in terms of microwatt. So I'll get point seven nine six microwatts. Minus, uh, sorry, point seven nine six micro watt. Okay, so you must be wondering why we did this conversion from uh, you know by, uh, micro watt to dBm, uh, but we have not actually used that uh, dBm at all, right? So that can be used if you use this equation that p of l is p naught plus Minus alpha l. Okay, that is this equation. That is this equation here. Equation number five. You can also use this equation. P e of l is p naught plus minus alpha l. Right. So if you are using that equation, then then all of this needs to be in dBm. That means now in this equation, I will have to use the dBm value of p of l. The dBm value of p of Uh, p not is minus seven, right? So in this equation, now p of l l will become minus seven plus minus alpha. Alpha is point eight into l, which is thirty, right? So this will be negative seven plus uh, you'll get uh, minus twenty four. Right, am I correct? Just uh, check with me. So P of L will now become minus thirty-one, but this value will be in dBm. Then you will have to reconvert it back to watts. Right? Uh, I hope this is clear. Right? Any questions? I am showing you both ways of doing it. Uh, you can uh, interrupt me if you don't understand okay okay so this p of l that we get by the second equation is negative 31 dbm right now let me see let, let us see how we can convert it to watts now if i want to find p of l in dbm then the equation is i need to find 10 log to the base 10 
of the power in watt divided by 1 milliwatt right but in this case we see that we are given the lhs this value pl dbm is negative 31 we are given this value we have found that value therefore that will be 10 log to the base 10 right of the power we want to find this power in watts divided by 1 milliwatt right so how can I rewrite this equation? This equation will become negative 31 by 10 equal to log to the base 10 power divided by 1 milliwatt. Now if I want to get rid of that uh, logarithm, I will have 10 raised to minus 31 by 10 equal to power divided by 1 milliwatt. That implies power should be 1 milliwatt into 10 raised to minus 31 by 10. Right? Can anyone tell me what answer you get here? So 0 0.7 hmm. 0 point? 794. Hmm. 0. Hmm. 794 into 10 raised to minus 6. Minus 6. No, no sir. Whole, uh, uh, it should not be 6. Hmm. No, don't multiply that milliwatt. Keep the milliwatt separate. Just tell me what is the answer you get for 10 raised to minus 30, uh, 10 raised to minus 31 by 10. 7.94 into 10 raised to minus 4, sir. Minus 4. So let me erase this. You get. Uh, let me cancel this. You get uh, 7.94 into 10 raised to minus 4. 4. Am I right? Okay. Now see, yes. when we had used this equation, when we, we had used the previous equation here, Right. What answer do we get? 0.796 microwatt. Here we have not done any conversion to dBm. We directly use this equation here. Okay. In the second part, we have used the dBm value of uh, P0 and we have found the dBm value of P of L and then we reconverted it back to the watts. That is the units of watt and what we are getting is P equal to 1 milliwatt right so let me rewrite this p equal to 1 milliwatt which is 10 raised to minus 3 into 7.94 into 10 raised to minus 4 right so let me re readjust this so i'll have 10 raised to minus 2 into 0.794 into 10 raised to minus 4 which is nothing but 0.794 into 10 raised to minus 6 which is nothing but 0.794 microwatts right so if you compare this answer with the previous answer that we got, they are one and the same, right? So through this numerical, I have shown you that whatever equation you use for attenuation constant or finding the power value, whether it is in watt or whether it is using the DBM, the answer that you get is one and the same. Right? So I hope that was clear to you. Okay. Uh, for more clarity, let me just quickly repeat what we have just done okay so we are trying to find the attenuation value or attenuation equation so this is how the attenuation equation is specified through equation one where p of l or p output is related to p input p of zero as an exponential decaying exponential e raised to minus alpha now we can write this equation one in different forms so we can first cross multiply and then get rid of the exponent by using natural log and then once you have uh, converted it to natural log that is in equation 2 if you look at equation 2 alpha is written in the form of uh, 1 by l natural log p naught by pl after doing that you can convert it into log that is decibels right so for doing that you multiply it by 10. So you have alpha equal to 10 by L 
log to the base 10 p naught by p f after which after which you can also write this equation in the form of equation 4 which relates p l with p naught as 10 raised to minus alpha l by 10 so this is one form which we can use or you can use a very simple form in equation 5 which is p l equal to p naught plus minus alpha l but all of this has to be in db that means alpha has to be in db and your powers need to be in dbm whichever power is given to you input or output right so you can use any of these equations as per the numerical so in this numerical where we are given the value of uh, l alpha and input power we first converted this input power into dbm and the answer that we got is negative 7 dbm then we use two equations to find the value of p naught so the first equation that we used is alpha equal to 10 by l log log of p naught by p l and using that equation very simply we found the answer to be 0.796 microvolt now here important thing to note is that we have used only the watt unit or watts unit of the power the input power so we directly got the output as uh, in in terms of uh, watts that is p of l. we also tried the second equation that is p of l is p naught plus minus alpha l here everything needs to be in dbm and alpha needs to be in db so we have used the dbm value of p naught which we had found earlier and you can see we have used negative 7 right alpha is 0.8 and L is 30. So the answer that we get in this uh, equation, this form of equation is PL, P of L equal to negative 31 dBm, right? So we convert it back to the uh, original value of watts. So we are using the equation to convert or find dBm through the watts equation. And after doing that, we find the same answer we find the same okay so whichever equation you use uh, based on the numerical the answer that you will get is the same right so we'll solve more numericals based on attenuation in which uh, different factors are asked this was just uh, one of the problems that uh, we could do okay uh, then we also need to do the uh, the uh, theory behind attenuation why attenuation occurs and how it occurs and then we can move on to dispersion so uh, this was just an introduction of the numericals uh, of the attenuation and how input and output powers are related to each other.